everybody welcome back it's episode 19 of marketing matters marketing matters is of course our weekly show where we, we discuss marketing uh, we, we dive into some topics and tips about uh, you know what you guys can use in your own marketing strategy and that's something that that Lance and I just actually talked about uh, we're gonna be bringing that back a little bit we did a little bit with like reviews and local Absolutely. search but we're gonna rope that back into things uh, but either way this is our weekly marketing show it happens every Thursday at 1 15 Lance and myself host it um, it's episode 19 coincidentally Google turned 19 yesterday um, they bought the domain over 20 years ago, but we won't get into that right now. Um, joined by CJ Bachman, who's our VP of Operations. So CJ, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. I think a lot of the topics that we're going to get into today, um, you're going to have some, some really great input. So we're excited for that. Um, before we jump into anything else, though, just wanted to give a big shout out to a couple people who work behind the scenes on Marketing Matters um, to make this kind of work and run smoothly each week. Um, they do a great job, Nikki Violi, Rachel Lawler, Sarah there you go, Day. Rachel. Come on up here real fast. Come on, come guys. On. Come on, Rachel, Nikki. Come on. They make it. They make it so. They make it so Lance and myself can just come in and just start talking. Come so it's say great. Hi. Come on. Say hi. W, ladies, there she is. There they are. <laughs> There really is a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes, and so Lance and I can just come and sit down and talk. So, so we appreciate all the, uh, the work that they do. You guys rock. The biggest rock. thing is what I thought was impressive is people don't understand how technology. I was supposed to be speaking at Google today, but I couldn't because for some other reasons we couldn't get up there. But you know that event we were going to actually put us live here on yep. the screen, and they had the technology ready to go. I mean, I think that's pretty impressive. And kudos that they're constantly embracing technology to make the show better. And we're happy to have CJ here. I mean, she is my sister-in-law. So if everyone's wondering why I had the same name, <laughs> wasn't thrilled about that, but love her, have her working here. So. I'm happy to be here. So <laughs> yeah, thank no. You, Lance. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, absolutely. And that face time thing, someone will have to keep in our back pocket for uh, for when you do go on no one of these trips. But um, another thing to, to start before we get into the topics is a big shout out to Lance and want to see, of course. Uh, the U.S. Search Awards came out last night. The shortlist came out early this morning, actually. And one of the was shortlisted 22 times over 13 categories. You know, I think what people don't realize about this award, and this is where, you know, first of all, kudos to my team, right? We have about 80 digital marketers here now. They bust their hump every single day. They work really hard. And, yeah, we have some failures here. There's no doubt about that. But time and time again, we win more than we lose. And, this is only the only awards I've ever seen yet. And that's why we take them so seriously, where you gotta put the body of work in there, what you did, you gotta put the data in there, you gotta show the data, they audit it, There's none of the judges are actually from. So I judge the European yep. ones, right? So we can't judge our own awards, which I love the fact of that. And there's really not a boys clubs behind it network. You know, when we go to this award, it's about, what do you say, 400 people every year? Mm -hmm. A little the, bit larger, actually. A little bit larger. And the best agencies in the country are there. And, you know, once again, we're up for more awards than any other agency. And I think this really shows you how good we're getting in other departments. Is Before we started five years ago, this, or was it four years ago, the awards? Five. Four years ago. It was a lot of SEO awards, a lot of SEO awards, a lot of us. Right. Now we're up for best pay-per-click agency because of our, and Google just named us the number two agency in the country for display. Right. We came in, that's from Google, right? right? So our paid, pro, our paid employees have gotten way better, our products gotten way better. We're up for social media. Yeah, we're up there's for, a lot of social media awards. Social yep. media awards where we're, we've gotten, and that's kudos to our team here. And I just want to take a time and thank all of our employees because I know how hard you work and I know there's a millennial stigma between me and you guys and you know, we're never gonna get past that, I'll tell you that right now. But what I will say is this is, hats off to you, you earned it, and hopefully we win an award or two this year because your hard work is being seen in the industry. And you know, we have so many happy clients and I really thank our employees. I mean, it's amazing what they do. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think you hit it right on the head too. Like these are data, you literally present the numbers, you present the data, you present the story, the work that you did, they sit there, they run through all of these submissions and select the best of the best. So I mean, I think it's, the it says a lot. have to be the best of the best. Yeah, right. it's, it's all about the data. So it's not a, a first impression, it's not a I like you, I don't like you, or you're right. in this club or you're not in this club. It truly is about did we perform for our clients. Um, and being nominated for 22, and like you said, more than any other agency um, out that is that applied is, is huge. It's big. Yeah, and and I think about it. Think about this. Every time it comes down to a data award, one SEO is in it. Yeah. 
You know, and that's why I always say to people, it's not like you said, it's not about the boys club, who you like the best. So when you're out there interviewing for clients and agencies and you're looking through that process, you know, I see all these, you know, someone said to me the other day, why are you not on top SEOs or why are you not on this other one? Because you pay to play to be there. You're paying them to be there. So of course we're not going to pay to be on these, you know, right. lead generation sites when I don't think it's fair to say to somebody, yeah, we're ranked the number one. Google, we put the data in, we came back number two. And know what, the other company is gonna win that award tonight, congratulations to them, because I know how hard that company has to work to outbeat us. So, I mean, congratulations to them. Absolutely. But yeah, no, big big shouts to you, Lance, and big shouts to one of of course, um, on, on the work, and we're excited to take home a couple of these. Uh. Absolutely. Um, we're gonna be in, in Vegas in November. We're gonna be there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, we'll, we'll take a couple of these home, don't worry. Um, Jumping into some, some interesting topics, this was actually a pretty big week as far as things that came about, um, some of the news, uh, Google's birthday, Amazon just yesterday released a bunch of those new Echo shows, they're really, really buying into that, I think they released six more variations of it, so you and can tell. Also Amazon just released, I don't see it in here, you can actually return your products now back at wholesale, at any wholesale, and what else, Whole Food, at any Whole Foods and what's the other place they announced. So Amazon just announced if you buy a product from Amazon, you can actually return it at Whole Foods. Any Whole Foods make it a little easier. Yeah, make yeah, it a little easier for people. Yeah, so there was definitely a lot, a lot of that going on in the news this week. Um, one of the things that came up though is Apple decided to switch back to Google uh, with all results that come through Siri that rely on some sort of a web search. So if she can't get you the weather or whatever right away, she, she needs to take it to a web search. They're going back to Google uh, for the results. Google is obviously widely popular compared to Bing, so you know, it, I guess it makes sense. And I guess just because they had Google before, they switched to Bing, now they're back to Google. I think that tells a lot about the experience that people were having. So I think that was only an 18 month switch. I don't yeah, even I don't think it was think that long. Any yeah, there. Not long. Spotlight yeah. too, as well, on Mac, right? Yep, yeah, and that's important to note. So, spotlight on the Mac computers, MacBook, whatever it might be, um, all that voice search, it, going back to Google. So, and I think that this is a big hit for Bing only because. I mean, whether people use Siri or not, I know it's not incredibly popular, but voice search in general is on no, the rise. No so to be the provider there for the results, I think that's a big, a big factor. I think whenever you lose anything off the Apple devices, it hurts yeah. you. Just because I know Droid's very popular, I know, it, I know it's grown, but Apple by far is still staple. staple yeah. Form. Absolutely. So, and, and what's interesting to note is Bing. So Bing used to power Siri. It also powers um, Yahoo, AOL, Verizon companies, obviously. Um, just and Amazon has some powering from Bing too. So it's just interesting to note. But yeah, they lost Apple here, so that's a big hit. But I wouldn't be surprised if they lose a few other ones also along right. the way. Yeah, absolutely. And Bing's this is, we'll come up a little bit later here in the in the show, but uh, but definitely a hit for them. So we wanted to talk about. There was a jacket that re was released. It's actually called the Jackard, I guess. Uh, we were talking about how to pronounce it. But um, Levi's and Google, Lance, you actually spoke about this at a couple of your conferences uh, because it was announced over a year ago. Um, the reason why it was in the news this week is it's actually officially on sale, so you can go and buy this jacket, integrate it with your phone, use it for Google Maps. You can answer a phone call, you know, have a text message read or whatever it might be. Um, Pretty interesting. I, I think it's not so much about selling a three hundred and fifty dollar jacket. I think it's more like okay, they're selling an an idea, a concept. Are people lifestyle. into this? And if so, let's produce it on a you know a bigger scale. The video I saw a year ago, and I think you mentioned it a little bit, the image of the gentleman, good looking European, riding a bike. Right. Now, me personally, forty some years of age, got a little bit of a gut. I probably not want to leave my jacket on. I'm damn sure not riding the bike to work. Not right? on a huffy. Yeah, I'm not on a huffy. So. <laughs> I mean, I don't think a Levi would even fit me, right? So, I mean, <laughs> it's one. realistic. But, you know, it's a lifestyle. They're saying, hey, listen, you're going to ride to work. You're going to be able to use your phone. It's more for gearing it towards that millennial that's a business person that's going to ride his bike to work, have a Levi jacket on, be able to – I know you can text through it. I know you can mm -hmm. talk through it. I know your, um, all your devices, apps go to it for being fit, mileage, all that. I know that part. Um, do I think this is just the beginning? As we saw last year, um, Under Armour yeah. merged with what was the name of the company again? Uh, SBG or SB? What well, uh, SB? The technology company, and they bought a part of it. So they're going to merge to make wearable, which we know already out some shirts, some pants, the athletic wear, for all yeah. that athletic wear, and they're going to advance it. So I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing a lot more stuff go to clothing that has all integration. I don't think you're going to see too many. 
people in my demographic wearing these things every day, but I do think you're gonna see the younger demographic just kind of naturally go into it and say, I can sit in the classroom now with my Levi jacket on, don't have to pull my phone out. You know, it was funny, we had a, <clears throat> some politicians here yesterday just helping out with some campaign stuff, and I actually asked the guy, is your phone ringing? And he looked at his watch, and he's like, yeah, it is. And I looked at him, I was like, you little smart ass, 26 <laughs> years old. Like, now everyone else is in the room looking at him, looking at his watch, but he, yeah. he made an impression, right? I mean, so I think it's gonna be more about the lifestyle with this. Well, there's a, there's a lot of uh, wearables, and I think, Anthony, you're right in terms of, right now it's all about seeing how is this gonna fit in, how's it gonna play out, how many people are gonna use it. $350 jacket, if it's good denim quality, whatever the case may be, it's not a, a far reach, so it's more, right. it's more about what are we gonna get out of it, what is the information that we're gonna get back, um, and then really being able to kind of develop it from there. Land, you mentioned the watches. Um, there's also a line of rings out there, and they vibrate a certain number of times if you're getting a text, if you're getting a phone call. Um, and you can't do anything from it other than you know what's happening. Right. Um, I was watching The View or one of those morning shows, um, and that was on there. And she was making a joke. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. My ring is buzzing. Um, and it literally just um, you know, indicates that you have an incoming call or text, um, or some of them light up. Um, but I think one of the interesting things about this, and we were talking about it before the show, um, is uh, lifespan. Um, you can only wash it 10 times uh, before the material starts to, right. to lose um, the, the factors that it needs in order to make this work properly. So how's that gonna play out? You know, Are they gonna get enough information that they need to, to fix that and make it better? Yeah, and I mean, both of the examples I, with the ring and she, she was distracted and your example of the phone call, like, and how it was just so natural, like, it's already integrated into its life completely. Absolutely. You know, it's that whole internet of things where before we know it, we're going to have our blenders connected to the internet and we're going to have, you know, the our collars on our shirts letting us know when we need to eat, you know, because our, our blood well, you know sugar's low. You know your television's already do. Yep. Your refrigerator's already do. Your lights already do. Your music already does. There's washers and dryers that already do. I mean, your temperature already does. I mean, like you said, yeah, I don't know if there's a blender out there. I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Right. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, I mean, it's coming. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, just looking at the, the graph here of the growth of wearable devices, obviously watches have taken off. It seems like Apple Watch and, and you know, Samsung has a, a series of their own. That's definitely taken off, but I, I'm interested to see how the clothing lines, and you mentioned Under Armour, like athletes can use it to track performance, to see things like, you know, how they're doing or how many calories they might've burned or whatever it might be. But I mean, just the everyday stuff too, I want to see how that really kind of, how I companies see, use it. I see parents using the watches now for their kids, mm -hmm. saying you can only, you can program it now. So one of my friends, Danny, it blew my mind on the Samsung one. He gave his son a watch, his son's nine years old, said, okay, I'm buying you a phone. The phone goes within reason. You can only call five people from that and the watch, but the watch has a GPS on it. They knows where his son is at all times. Yeah, so true. he's using it as a tracking measurement for his son to see what his son's doing to make sure his son's safe. And his son thinks it's a cool lifestyle of, I'm nine years old and I gotta watch this got phone. Yeah. And I can only call mommy, daddy, I think his sister, and he might have put granddad for grandma, but there's only five people you call. To me, I just think you're gonna see parents start embracing technology more and more. Because I can tell you this, my son, two younger sons, I should probably put up my older son, truthfully, too. <laughs> but <laughs> my two younger sons, I'm definitely going to have that for when they're of age, just for my own tracking measurements. Right. And the watches definitely have a lot to do with this number, but right. I think we're forgetting the, the fitness aspect of it, um, as well as the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. There's already, and I wish I remembered the name of it, but there's a company that you order um, this, this outfit. It looks like a workout outfit, but it's completely... Um, it, well, filled with technology that says what your body type is, your style, so that you can order clothing um, that fits you. Um, you put it yeah, on yeah. and it tells you. So <laughs> when you order online, because let's face it, we're lazy, we don't even want to go to the store. Um, so now you can make sure that you get that perfect fit every time. From your inseam to um, you know whether you have certain types of shapes or whatever the case right. may be, like it literally sends the information to your computer. You place your order, you're done. Men's shirts, they were on Shark Tank not too long ago. Same thing. You put on this shirt, it does all the measurements for you, sends it right to the company. The company mails you your collared shirt that's custom tailored. Yeah, and without getting like too too sidetracked or like tinfoil hat, I read an article <laughs> a while ago that uh, mentioned you know. 
if we have this type of clothing on that can track our heart rate or things like that, and I'm walking through a Target, what products or advertising, you know, increases my heart rate or, or whatever yeah. it might be? Like that's, it's it seems like it's far off, but like that could be the direction. I definitely go in this direction for retail. Yeah. I mean, think about this. I just spoke at Supply Side out in Vegas, and I said to everyone about Beacon Technology and. I mean, Google just broke this week that's not on here. Google's going to give every retailer a free beacon. Right. Probably. They're willing to give it to you so they can serve, and then they're going to also say, I mean, if I can't serve ads, I can see what the people are doing. So they're doing it two ways. I'm going to drop on your phone, and I'm going to track and see what you like to do. And all Because if people don't realize, on your iPhone, if I have that Google beacon technology, you're open to track analytics, advertising. Right. Most people don't know that's actually an option on their iPhone. When I show people that, they're like, oh my God, I didn't know this. You're giving all this information back. Retailers are definitely going to it more and more. Big retailers are already using it. Yeah. It's going to be, can we disseminate that information down to the time after times, the luxury bazaars, people like that that could really use this information to make decisions. Well, yeah. You can calculate your bounce inside of the store. How long am I staying in front of it? I mean, if you think about it, we were at Toys R Us last night. Um, my son, Landon, he's 14 asked the question as we walked in the door because every time we walk in Toys R Us changes and he was like how do you get in the front of the store mom how did they get in the front of the store and uh, we were trying to explain it to him but in reality if you are, have the ability to say okay someone stands in front of this shelf for this long you know what can you do with that data absolutely yeah no absolutely so I think I think it's just gonna be a matter of kind of we're gonna see this this growth continue to go and we're gonna see wearables really take off but 100%. we just wanted to mention that if anyone wants to go buy a $350 jacket that you can watch 10 times or watch 10 times go for it you can do it yeah, let us know how it works and let us know how you like yeah it. we'll have you on <laughs> we'll have to have you on um, so Bing was in the, the, the news I guess um, you know bouncing around the industry websites again this week um, they kind of unveiled this Bing for business type thing that they're gonna be rolling out it's a private preview um, the article I, I was reading, you know, someone from Bing, I guess this has been being used internally at Bing for a while now, and they say it's really, really intuitive and it's great. Uh, but basically, you know, what it is is it's going to tie in um, information that's relevant to your business and information that's relevant from your workflow or whatever it might be into the search results. So if you need to quickly search for an employee, you can, you know, pull up their, their calendar or see what, you know, what's going on with them. Um, and it integrates into search in, in a way. If, if, if I see where this is going, right? So Microsoft owns Office 365. So that means they own your Outlook, right. your PowerPoint, all those things. They, that's their, that, and that's just so everyone understands, that's the number one way Microsoft makes money is by far that product they offer, right? People don't realize Xbox makes up less than 2% of their total revenue. I right. mean, Microsoft makes over about 80 some percent of their revenue from <laughs> Microsoft PowerPoint Outlook because for years they were the only player in town for big businesses. So I mean it was just that was it. Now is the mid to small size companies have all gone to Gmail, G Suite. You don't have to pay for Docs, you don't have to pay for Excel, you don't have to pay for PowerPoint, right. you don't have to pay for any of these products and services. It's hitting their Microsoft dollars, right? Microsoft also said, okay, we are in the B2B business, right? So they bought LinkedIn, right? And now right. they're trying to make that and Butlinda.com and they're making that part of a training facility. I think this is directly going to go and say, okay, we know we have to be a web-based solution for email, for documents, and I think they're just going to try and put it on steroids and then integrate it through search. Do I think it's going to make a big difference? If I don't, I can't see. Maybe I'm just crazy. Someone going to Bing and looking for CJ's calendar when I know I can just go right to calendar and look for CJ. Right. Maybe I'm wrong. But I don't know how well this is going to be played out if that's the route Microsoft is going. Right. Which I don't see how they don't. I've always wondered why they never had a product to compete. I guess you could say Outlook is their product to compete. But if you're sitting on an airplane, I can go connect to Wi Fi and see all my Gmail. If I don't have a good connection, I got to download every single Outlook. It's just. Yeah. I think. I think you pretty much hit the, the main problem on the head is that most businesses probably already have some sort of thing going on, like a flow going on, or some sort of an integration already. So the, the challenge is going to be to get them to switch. So for us, it would be like for us to switch from using the G Suite. But everyone, it's so integrated already that I don't think it makes it would make sense for a lot of businesses to decide to make this switch. Um, Unless they're going to try and take their Outlook customers, right. which they still, Outlook is still used 
way more in business than Gmail. Right. People don't understand it. Because it's, it's been in close. play for so long. No so doubt. that's the big thing. And I think that you know once they get through this private preview, we'll learn a little bit more about it. But to play devil's advocate here, um, if I am in a large, large corporation, um, instead of going to my inbox and doing a search in there or my drive and doing a search in there or whatever it may be, if being as the default you know, search engine and I go up there and I'm looking for a document that I have previously sent to you, Anthony, right. um, you know, if I do some kind of search and it's bringing back those results, it might end up being relevant. Absolutely. Um, maybe not so much for small businesses, but maybe in some of those larger corporations, um, just as a simple place to make one search. So maybe the emails, the calendar, the files, you know, documents and things like that all come back in one place. Yeah. Um, on, the, on the other end, we were talking about it again before the mm -hmm. show, if I am looking for a document um, because I'm researching something new and my search results start to get infiltrated with my personal documents when I'm really doing new research, how is that going to affect uh, things? Um, so we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, I think, I think that's a great example. Like when your personal results start to weigh down, you actually trying to get to like legit organic results, right. then it just becomes an annoyance or whatever Absolutely. it might be and you have to scroll down yeah, or whatever. In which case I'm immediately going to use a different search yeah, engine. So I don't have We to. had a question that just came in for this. Uh, do you think that this will ever be a premier choice over Google for business? So like kind of what what other companies use now and what we, we take advantage of? Okay, so I'm gonna answer it. No one can predict the future, but in the next 18, 24 months, absolutely not. I do think if somehow artificial intelligence can get wrapped into the calendar, mm -hmm. into your mail, and have it start doing predict the modeling, making things easier, better, you know, auto-correcting sentences for you while you're writing an email, right on the spot, you know, maybe maybe saying how, almost how Google Assistant is helping you when you go to do a flight and it has it there for you on U.S. Right. Airways yep. and timing for you. Go, they, 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 they answer your question, probably not because Google, my Google Gmail suite is so advanced, they're constantly staying on it. They would have to come up with something revolutionary. Right, something really innovative. Yeah, I, I just don't, I just don't. In the next 12 to 18 months, I don't know how. Yeah, I'm going to say no, but I do think there are going to be some pretty large corporations that it might be beneficial for. But I don't think it's going to be able to surpass um, what Google's been able to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with both of you guys. So, probably Lance's favorite topic of the week, um, even though he's not a huge Twitter guy. Uh, Twitter has been testing out and is actually rolling out now, switching the character count from 140, the infamous 140 character. The Trump Matt, Factor! To 280. <laughs> um, so I was gonna incorporate Trump into this presentation and I was like, that's not a good career move. I'm leaving politics out of this. And then Lance scolded me for not including it, so I don't know where to, I don't know what to do anymore. There are some funny memes out there. Yeah. Yes, we've all seen them today. They are funny. We don't do politics. Everyone knows that. We don't discuss them. We don't do that. But whether you like Trump or you dislike Trump, doesn't make a difference to us. He tweets. But he tweets. He's single-handedly holding Twitter together. I, you know, I, I said this the other day at the gym. I'm watching the news, and it's Trump Twitter there, Trump Twitter there, and then on four of the eight channels at the NAC in Newtown, it was Trump's Twitter handle. And I'm sitting there dying because we all know Twitter's going backwards. They're losing revenue. They're mm -hmm. losing users. They're going backwards. But because of Trump, they're still relevant. And I'll have people say to me, should I advertise on Twitter? Should I be doing this on Twitter? I... And I'm like, listen, if your budget, if you have extra budget, you go to these platforms. But it would not be for most people. Right. There's always the outliers. But for most people, Twitter wouldn't be the first place you go advertise. But do I think this character count's gonna help them? I don't think it's gonna make a difference. I think it's gonna help Trump. I think it's gonna help uh, Jameel Hill and all these other people yeah. that want to go back and argue with Trump via Twitter and all these Twitter people that are just taking shots at each other. I think it's going to get more interesting. But you got to think about this. The increase the character count before, you couldn't put pictures or gifts in it before. Then they came out with that. Right. You know, if you go to 280, I mean, so the 120 or the 140 was supposed to be two full sentences, really, right? Of characters. Right. Now they're trying to make it to four characters. Do I think you can say more in four, ca in four sentences? Of course, but I just think Twitter's dead. I think Twitter would have to come out with something so far advanced. Um, I don't think it's gonna make a big difference. I think it's gonna be entertaining for me. Yeah. Because I enjoy watching all the Twitter. I, 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 listen, I'll be the first to tell everyone, 
I watch all the news channels for politics. I enjoy it, I love it, and I love seeing people blast each other because everybody likes a great train wreck. And I'm like, these Twitter screaming at each other, is just, it's just gonna get better. Well, I think that, well, besides the entertainment factor, um, I do think that this is going to make a little bit of a difference. I don't think it'll be long-lasting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to be a make-it-or-break-it kind of thing. Um, but one of the things to remember is that other countries and other languages can say a whole lot more and a whole lot less. Right. Um, so even myself, like if I'm going to promote an event that we're going on, Twitter's the last place I do it because in those two sentences, I really can't even put in who's going to be attending, where it's going to be, without running out of space. Absolutely. Shortening the sentence and not being able to get across what I want to get across. Um, so I'm one of those ones that have kind of abandoned it only because I would rather utilize sources in which I can at least put the proper information in there. So I think you're going to see an increase in people using the platform again. But then I think once they settle in and realize that it's still not doing anything for them, then it's going to die back down and Twitter's going to have to, again, figure something out. Do you use Twitter? I have a Twitter. Um, but do you use Twitter? But I don't use it. No, I have four tweets. Rachel, do we use my Twitter? It's my want to see a Twitter. We do? Anything good? So, and it should be. I use Twitter. Okay. <laughs> use, what do you use? Come on, Rachel, get up real fast. Okay. Rachel, come on up. Yeah, come join us. You're come a Twitter Rachel. expert. You're a Twitter it's an exciting day here, It's an guys. exciting day. Have a seat, Rachel. Tell what are you using Twitter for? Um, I don't know, like, my thoughts. You talk about TV shows, right? TV I mean, shows, yeah. yeah, my musicians. If, like, I spilled my coffee today, I tweet about that. <laughs> like, just funny things that More of the story. We gotta get Rachel more work. <laughs> no, no. I don't, well, I don't tweet during the day unless it's from 1SEO. But, like, funny <laughs> things, funny things that happen. Plus, like, I talk to my friends on there, and it's how I interact with, like, Famous people. Have you bought anything ever off of Twitter? No. Okay. Have you gone anywhere off of Twitter? Like a concert, but no, concert? not really. Not really. I think one of the key things she said though is famous people. So yeah, yeah. we we want to feel like we know these people. We want to feel like yeah. we're engaged with these people. And Twitter is one of those places where celebrities are constantly putting something out there, <laughs> no matter what it is. Um, and then a lot of times, whether it's them or their people, they are a little bit engaged because that's kind of what the industry pushes them to do. So Rachel yeah, gets to I think interact a, and, and see what's going on in the daily lives of these famous people. I think it's a pop culture thing where like memes go up there and like threads go and then it really like, people make fun of other trending, people. Trending, yeah. Well, trending. speaking about that, I mean, what's trending, right? I mean, we all just found out Rachel threw out the bat signal about a week ago, right? That's true. It was Did longer you, than a week, but yeah. Two weeks ago. <laughs> Did you put the bat signal out on Twitter? That means Rachel's recently single for the viewers. We call it the bat <laughs> signal around here. So I'll tell you a quick story real fast again to how marketing works because even the dating world is marketing, right? So we're driving down the street, me and my wife, Emily. I see Rachel's profile picture. <laughs> it's a pretty picture of her. She's sitting there. I'm like, man, this is odd. Rachel's been with us for almost two years now, so I've never seen her actually just throw herself out there that way. I'm like, Rachel, I'm like, Emily, should I put the bat signal up? Do you think that'd be rude? And she's like, they that'd be rude. I come in on Monday, and it's, I'm like, ah, and Rachel, your profile picture, I was gonna put the, she's like, well, I'm single. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. But that was her marketing, right? Yes. <laughs> Subtly, yeah. Subtly, sure. Did yeah. you put it on Twitter? I mean, no. I didn't put it anywhere. I wasn't just like, hey, yo, I'm single now. But, like, I tweet about boys now. Like, if I see a cute one, I'll be like, hey, I saw a cute boy today. You're almost waiting for a Mac from a man to get here. <laughs> next Thursday. Next Thursday? Yeah. I won't be on the episode next Thursday. I won't even be in the office next Thursday. So sorry. <laughs> well, Rachel, thanks for having a seat. Thanks for talking about Twitter. Yeah. Absolutely, but big, big news, and I'm sure everyone's mind went to our, our president when that news broke. I know mine did, um, but for those that tweet, enjoy the extra 140 characters. And then lastly, real quick, we'll touch on it. Instagram continues to, to dominate. Um, they're jumping pretty much every milestone that comes at them. Um, over 800 million uh, active use, monthly active users now. Um, so I personally think they'll be at, at over a billion active users, um, probably halfway through 2018, just the way it's growing. So, which I mean, to give it, put it in perspective, I mean, because Anthony just told us there's two billion active users on Facebook, Facebook. every single month. Yep. This is close to a billion. Snapchat has 130 million. Yep. So and everyone's like oh, Snapchat, Snapchat. And I think where Snapchat is failing compared to this is Instagram. You can do local advertising. Instagram, you can do things 
very, very local and push it out there, your content and information, get engaged in. Snapchat is still only national besides filters. That's crazy to me. Right. But everyone says Snapchat's the way of the future. I think Instagram is just going to put Snapchat out of I don't understand why Snapchat didn't sell. Yeah, I think, yeah, we were just laughing about that before. I think Inst once Instagram came out with Stories, which is basically Snapchat, it was just, pretty much a game. It was like People a 160% like, increase. Yeah, because if you see like stories. something funny, like a, I don't know, like a duck or whatever chasing a squirrel, like you're not, and you have one opportunity, oh, stay with me, you have one opportunity <laughs> to put it on somewhere, right? You can't pull out Instagram Stories and do it there and then go to Snapchat and do the same thing. You have one shot, so like, Everyone's on Instagram, so I'm going to put it on Instagram because that's where everyone's going to see the, the duck chase the squirrel. And it's funny, I, I, I see more people on Instagram our age that I never would have thought, and even older, and I guess it's it's the same people on Facebook and Instagram, now the demographics are switching over well, more and more. you have to remember, too, demographics are switching because a lot... I can't go onto Facebook anymore without it reminding me to connect with people on Instagram okay. or telling me to set up an Instagram. Yeah. So Facebook is also pushing. And then like you said, they've increased, Instagram has increased their users by over 160% since stories came out a little Crazy. over a year ago. So that goes yeah, to tell you short. the impact that Snapchat could have had right? Yeah. because there there is a market for it. However, it's just delivered so much better on Instagram. Um, and then even Facebook. So Snapchat, I think, is going to continue to evolve. I don't see them giving up anytime soon, um, but I think that they're going to keep finding what their core audience is going to be. Um, you know, still, my son uses Snapchat. Um, right. They do their stories on there. They have their threads going, um, their snaps, whatever it's called. And, you know, he has to make sure he's just taking random pictures of random things. And I'm like, what Snap are you streaks. doing? Yeah, he was like, I got to keep my streak going. <laughs> Um, so I don't think that they're giving up yet, but I don't think we're going to see their heyday anytime soon. And to quick little stat to where advertisers, marketers, and just people in general should be putting their, what kind of content they should be putting on Instagram, the time that people spend looking at videos, whether it's an ad or a post on Instagram, has gone up 80% year over year. So people like videos, they like the video advertisements, um, just a little tidbit, because I mean, I think we all know video everywhere is big, but Absolutely. the numbers don't lie there. So. But, CJ, it's been fun, and Lance, of course, always a pleasure uh, every Thursday. Next Thursday, we kind of previewed it. We have Mac uh, Frederick from the Momentum or Momentum Digital. Um, that'll be a really good, exciting episode, and we're excited. I do want to say congratulations for Trump for getting an increased Twitter's double in their character, because I think that's pretty impressive. The president can move stones. But on a serious yes. note, congratulations to one SEO team for everything Definitely. you've done. 22 guys search awards. That's Amazing. impressive. I, that's double more than any other company that's qualified for awards this year. And kudos, kudos to our social media team mm. and our PVC team. Our SEO team, everyone knows it's the number one team in the country by far. I mean, there's no question to ask when people come, SEO, it's who we are, it's what we've done. But we've integrated so well into other areas. And those leaders of that PPC and social media team and content team Congratulations to them. If there was a web development award, I'm sure we probably would have got one because those teams have also grown. But it's just amazing to see an agency really become so integrated. So thank you to all of our employees. I mean, kudos to them. Absolutely. Cause for celebration. Real quick before we say goodbye, Lance had mentioned about how hard everyone worked here, and we had a lot of people working on the search awards. But I do want to give a shout out to some people who truly did yeah. put blood, sweat, and tears in. Bernie, Annalisa, Sabrina, I know you guys are out there watching. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. The rest of the team that worked on it, thank you guys. Yeah, you guys rock. Congratulations to One SEO as a whole, 22 nominations, and we'll, we'll bring some home. So until next week, Lance and I will be back. We'll see you guys then. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, everyone.